Green lose 80 to 70 to the New York Liberty in what is pretty much a must win game. Let's talk about it. Remember all those times when I said, oh, it's not do or die time yet for the Dream? Well, now it's do or die time. Two games left, both of them are against New York, both of them are fighting for the last playoff spot. Same injury report as the last several games, but one player is missing the game for a different reason than usual. Tiffany Hayes, it turns out, is not really injured. She is just overseas. She is listed as a member of the Azerbaijani basketball team in the upcoming Islamic Games. But apparently this was not made apparent to the team until earlier today. Not wanting to risk injury for overseas play, that's one thing. But this, I really don't know how to feel about this. I'm definitely disappointed. I don't know if I should be though. I mean, if it's a commitment that she made a while back, you know, fine. But the Dream were not really told about this. There was no communication here. And Hayes is a part of the backbone of this team. And on top of that, it's the last home game of the season. I waited 19 games, 19 games to break out this uh, this jersey here. This Tiffany Hayes jersey. This was the first WNBA jersey I ever bought. 19 games I waited to finally break that out this season. And she pulls this. Look, if it's for a cause that she cares about, I can't necessarily knock her for it. I don't know. It's It's a shitty situation for sure. But there's nothing we can do about it except go forward. Now, fortunately for the Atlanta Dream, they addressed the guard depth issue with Tip's departure by adding Kayla Charles on a hardship contract. I don't know a whole hell of a lot about her, but it's guard depth that we really need, and she's an experienced player, which, again, we really need. So we shall see how she does. But at least the game was sold out, so the place will be loud and proud like it always is. The Atlanta Dream are wearing the best third jerseys in the league, I just wish that the Liberty weren't wearing their colors. You, you know my feelings on the color rush by now. And during the last home game of the season? Come on. To start the game, straight off the tip-off, Howard hands it to Wheeler, who hits a three to draw first blood, ten seconds in. Following that, it was fairly even, a, a fast-paced game, and both teams are scoring. Then after a while, New York's baskets seem to be coming increasingly easy. Halfway through the first quarter, the Liberty start pulling away, but Maya Caldwell plays a little bit of damage control there by hitting back-to-back -back twos. Ari McDonald checks in the game and immediately scores a three, then Howard scores her own three to tie the game. This helps the Dream stay in it when New York keeps sinking absolutely everything. It's 31-27 to after one period, New York leads. Cheyenne Parker starts the second quarter by scoring a quick two, and then the back-and-forth game kind of continues, though it's mostly the Liberty finishing off their shots. But at least uh, Cheyenne Parker is still staying active, not necessarily letting New York run with it, at least not yet. Former Dream player Bet Nigel Laney gets her second offensive foul of the game by barreling into Ari McDonald. And Atlanta has a hard time capitalizing. The liberty of finding open space way too easily, and Sabrina Ionescu and Natasha Howard are pretty much going unchallenged. That has to change if the Dream want to keep their playoff hopes alive. In addition to that, turnovers. The Dream had one in the first quarter. A few minutes ago in the second, they have five. The Liberty still only have one. New York would just go on a tear, 15 to one, before finally getting interrupted by Parker. It's 53 to 42 at the half. Atlanta was outscored 22 to 15 in that quarter. That is absolutely unacceptable. And this team is not known for its second half comebacks. In fact, they are 0 and 18 when trailing at the half. So unless they come up with some answers to Sabrina, Natasha, and Crystal Dangerfield, they're in big, big trouble. New York opens the third with Laney scoring a shot clock buzzer beater. And to be honest, there wasn't really a whole lot of notes worth taking after that. The Liberty were, once again, putting away everything that comes their way. The Dream hadn't scored a single point halfway through the quarter. Crystal Dangerfield is just doing whatever the hell she wants, and there's nothing the Dream can do about it. Finally, with 4 minutes and 37 seconds left in the third, Cheyenne Parker scores. Atlanta's first points of the quarter with a short layup. A 9 to nothing run finally broken up. So what if Sabrina scored immediately after at least the Dream were finally on the board this quarter? Erica Wheeler scores a couple of times, followed shortly by Maya Caldwell. Good for a 7 nothing run. I mean, it's great that they finally found their scoring touch, but where the hell was this in the first quarter? 70 to 53 after three quarters. Atlanta was outscored 11 to 17, and that's really all I have to say about that quarter. It's just inexcusable. At least the fans are still into it. After a free throw by Ari McDonald and a two by Howard, Howard rips a three-pointer to cut the lead to 13. New York calls a timeout. 
So you're telling me there's a chance. Atlanta forces a turnover leading to a two-pointer by Billings, making it an 11-point game. Wheeler gets an and one and sinks the free throw. Unescu gets blocked by Airy, and Wheeler picks up the loose ball, runs it right over to the other coast for a two. The deficit is now a single digit. Another forced turnover. Parker to Howard to Airy. Airy scores a two, seven-point game. Wheeler has 16 points, Parker 13, Howard 12, and McDonald with 10, all leading the dream in scoring. Crystal Dangerfield actually missed the shot, so it turns out she's human after all. Atlanta did a tremendous job, but then they kind of cooled off some. They started missing shots again, except for Ryan Howard's free throws, but, you know, she was going to make those in any event. Still, the Dream didn't really pick a good time to finally show up. They brought the score to 77-70, to and they wouldn't score any more than that. They would end up losing 70-80. to Last game at home, fan appreciation night, and they only showed up for a half of a quarter. Not sure why that's the thanks that the fans get on fan appreciation night for showing up all season long. No offense to the job that the Dream have done in a general sense throughout the entire season, this team was pretty much the worst last season. So much chaos, so much controversy, completely blown up and reassembled roster, coaching, and ownership. So few returning players and staff, and this is how they responded? I mean, I can't really disappoint it at that. If Tanisha Wright doesn't win Coach of the Year, I call BS. The Dream are not 100% out of the playoff picture. They're not mathematically eliminated, but a win Sunday is absolutely vital. If the Mercury defeat the Sky on Sunday, the Dream are out. If the Dream win and the Mercury lose, the Dream are in. But no matter what happens, I'm going to be there for it, and you better be too. I'll have the recap right after since I don't work that day, and I hope I see you then.